I'm going to start off by saying bookmark this video because whether or not you think you'll ever need it, you will. On this episode of Doing the Most, we're talking about a very simple way of removing rotten egg smell from your meat or wine. Moment bruise and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. Hydrogen sulfide is a volatile sulfur-containing compound that forms during fermentation. And typically it forms due to poor nutrition for your yeast. The yeast gets stressed and generate hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide can also result from a poorly oxygenated must. It smells like rotten eggs. And when you smell it, you smell it. It can take up an entire room. The first time I interacted with a hydrogen sulfide fault was actually in 20 gallons of Skeeter pee. This was five or six years ago, and I thought I was gonna have to toss the entire batch. That's when I learned about splash racking. The splash racking method involves vigorously racking the must back and forth three to five times in order to introduce a lot of oxygen to the must. But there is a better method. First, let's talk about hydrogen sulfide and where it comes from. Hydrogen sulfide develops in what's called a reductive environment. And basically what that means is the molecules and atoms in that environment are more likely to share electrons. And meads and wines are particularly good at becoming reductive environments. You may have sulfates or elemental sulfur in your must. And if you do, it probably came in with the fruit. Sulfur is naturally occurring. It's part of a lot of living things. And in a reductive environment, that sulfur can come together and bond with hydrogen, creating hydrogen sulfide. And hydrogen sulfide ends up smelling like rotten eggs. The best way to combat hydrogen sulfide ever developing is to make sure your must is well oxygenated during primary. Plenty of oxygen in your must creates what's called an oxidation reductive potential, basically meaning that there's enough oxygen in there that it can counteract hydrogen sulfide and kind of make it go away. That's why splash racking can be effective. You're introducing a lot of oxygen and that oxygen can help make the rotten egg smell disappear. And the way I've splash racked in the past is by starting my siphon and leaving the racking tubing near the top of the fermentation vessel so it kind of vigorously rains down and splashes oxygen into the must. Repeat that three to five times, wait 24 hours, give it a sniff. If you're still smelling a little bit of sulfur, do it again. But like I said, there's a better way. And weirdly enough, it involves copper. In the winemaking industry, this comes in the form of copper sulfate. And it's a liquid chemical that is added in very expertly measured amounts, and the copper bonds to the hydrogen sulfide and pulls it out of suspension. However, copper sulfate is incredibly poisonous. And when we're talking about adding it to meat or wine, we're talking about adding it in the single digit parts per million. And at the homebrew scale, that's pretty difficult to do, and I don't recommend it. Such an abundance of caution is necessary when working with copper sulfate, I wouldn't even recommend it to my worst enemy. So, what's the best way to expose your must to copper in order to help precipitate out the hydrogen sulfide? Well, if you look at homebrewing forums, there are some great options. Some will recommend racking it through a copper mesh. Others recommend building your own racking cane out of copper itself and racking through that. And while both of these are likely fairly effective, this process creates a lot of precipitants. It, it creates kind of granules of stuff because there's a chemical reaction happening. And particularly in a copper racking cane, I would be pretty fearful that I wasn't able to clean all that gunk out of there after the process was complete. So recently, I experienced a hydrogen sulfide fault for my second time ever. And it was in the hydromel batches that we used for our AB test on cheap versus expensive tannin. I came into the brew room and it just reeked back here. It smelled like I had let a dozen hard boiled eggs go rancid. I got down to the carboy neck and I sniffed it and I just, I knew, I knew exactly what it was. And at that point, I'd had a couple of people reach out through Instagram asking about what to do with hydrogen sulfide fault. And I'd recommend splash racking or some sort of copper filter. But then I had this idea and I was presented with the opportunity of testing it out for myself. As a guy who once worked a low paying job at Radio Shack, I have a lot of electronic stuff around. I've always been kind of fascinated by it and tinkered with it, though, though maybe I've never had great 
technical expertise. However, I knew that out in the garage I had some copper wire. And this is 100% copper wire, solid copper wire, not the braided stuff. It's made for electrical connections or audio connections, things like that. And I thought maybe this is a good way to introduce copper to my must. I started by splash racking each five gallon batch a couple of times just to get some oxygen mixed into the must. And then I went out and got my copper wire from the garage. And after some trial and error on both of those batches, this is what I recommend. Start by doing some splash racking, get some oxygen in there, and then measure out a length of copper wire about as long as your fermentation vessel. This is the part where we'll cut away to a top down so you can see what's going on here. Once you've measured out your length of copper wire, strip the plastic sheath off. This exposes the full length of the wire. Then clean it with a mild soap, like a dish soap, rinse it thoroughly, and sanitize it. Once you've got your piece of wire nice and sanitized, just stick it down in your fermentation vessel. If you've got a carboy or a demijohn like these and you're using a bung, you can just pop that in to hold everything in place. Easy as that. Give it a swirl to get the liquid moving gently and then leave it for an hour. Come back, give it a sniff, and see if it's done. Repeat this until the smell goes away. In my experience with my two five gallon batches, it took about three hours per batch to entirely eliminate the rotten egg smell. And it was terrible to start out with. I was amazed at how well this works. Now when you take it out of there, you're gonna see little bits of copper kind of floating on the surface and maybe sinking down into your meter wine. Those are the bits that have bonded with the hydrogen sulfide and are dropping out. You'll notice also that there will be quite a bit of corrosion on your copper wire. Once you've completed this process, the rotten egg smell is gone, you'll want to use a fining agent like bentonite or sparkaloid to make sure all of the copper has been dropped out and is left behind. You don't want any of that copper carrying over into your finished product. And this video wouldn't be complete without mentioning just a few quick caveats. For one, you'll wanna make sure you're using 100% copper, not an alloy or anything plated, and I prefer a solid copper wire to a braided copper wire. Just because I have a better sense of safety that I can get one copper wire clean and sanitized versus a bundle of dozens or hundreds in one of those braided wires. Also, earlier additions of copper are more effective. So as soon as you notice that smell, get to work on removing it. The longer it sits in there, the more it can form other molecular compounds that are much more difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of that smell just as bad. And like I said, splash racking is a good way of getting some oxygen in there so you can help fend off a reoccurrence. And while you're doing that, go ahead and add a little bit of yeast nutrient because you might as well make sure that your yeast have everything they need to make it through the finish line. And again, you wanna make sure you get all the remaining copper molecules out of there. They are heavy and they will stick to finding agents, so use them in tandem. If you leave remnants of copper in your wine or mead, it can create kind of an ugly appearance in there, it can lead to oxidation problems, and it can also form other nasty compounds. Don't leave it in there. Hit it with finding agents and move on. Also, if you're brewing like really bold or tropical fruity flavors, it's been proven that copper can actually mute or obliterate those flavors. So use it with caution, and again, get it out of there as soon as it's done working. A lot of research went into creating this short video, and all the links for all the articles that I read are gonna be down in the description if you wanna do some further reading. But the nuts and bolts of it is, a little bit of 100% copper wire and a few hours of exposure should be enough to remove hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell from your wine or mead. So in summary, to remove rotten egg smell from your wine or mead, Splash rack it back and forth two to three times. Strip a 100% copper wire and place the copper wire in the neck of your fermentation vessel. Swirl it to get your liquid moving and then check on it every hour until the rotten egg smell dissipates. Once the smell is gone, hit it with a fining agent like bentonite or sparkaloid. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, drop a comment down there and let me know about your experience. And if you'd like to support the channel and continuing content like this, hit us up on Patreon or become a YouTube member. Links for that will also be in the description. Please follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at doing the most okay, and our website is doingthemost.org. Until next time, happy brewing.